Demon's Souls was released on the PlayStation 3 in 2009. In modern terms, that pretty much makes it absolutely ancient, despite it being a blueprint for an entire new genre that followed. So it's no surprise that for a lot of gamers looking forward to next generation consoles, Bluepoint's Demon's Souls remake will be their first brush with the grandfather of all Soulsborne titles. And what exactly awaits them? So that the world might be mended. Let's find out, shall we? changed a lot since the relatively quiet release of the original Demon's Souls, and in that time, the Soulsborne titles have become a cultural juggernaut in their own right. On the surface at least, Demon's Souls looks incredibly similar to the games that followed it, from boss encounters to equipment management to NPC hubs. But in actual fact, there were numerous design choices in Demon's Souls that could very well feel strange to a modern player. We'll get to those in a second. But first, the story. In Demon's Souls, players find themselves in the fog-ridden kingdom of Boletaria. Here, as with all other Soulsborne titles, death is not the end. Boletaria is being consumed by a dark and ancient being called the Old One, following its release through the use of forbidden soul art. So, you, the player, has been summoned to Boletaria to kill its fallen King Alant and thus pacify the Old One. The kingdom is comprised of five worlds, accessed via a central hub called the Nexus. So, the game as a whole is level-based, a little more disjointed than later From Software titles, which would often loop and link their locations back on one another in ingenious ways. But that makes these worlds no less twisted, dangerous, and fascinating to explore. Lost, withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. It might be useful to know too that there are no real lore connections between Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Maybe a few vague references, but nothing solidly canon. If you are a Dark Souls player though, you will no doubt notice a lot of ideas were reused in the later game, particularly from Demon Souls' early levels. Where Demon Souls really is different, however, is for one, the fact it does not feature Estus flasks, those good old reliable refillable drinking vessels that would restore a certain amount of player health upon swigging. Additionally, other helpful items like Titanite can be harder to come by. But one of the biggest differences between Demon Souls and all other Soulsborne games, however, is the presence of the world and character tendency mechanics. So, as a brief explainer, the original Demon's Souls had an entirely unique mechanic in world and character tendency. And essentially, world tendency is a sliding scale that influences the game's difficulty and a few other factors. And it changes depending on your actions, including whether you die, where you die, and whether you're playing online or not. The scale goes from pure white world tendency to pure black. On a basic level, pure white tendency enemies are easier to kill, with lower HP, attack and defense stats. But they drop fewer, less valuable items and hold a lower number of souls. However, they do drop healing items more frequently. So in general, white tendency makes the game easier. On the other end of the scale, pure black tendency enemies are tougher, but do drop more high value items overall for your trouble. And naturally, they hold a much larger number of souls. No spoilers, but certain events may or may not occur depending on your world tendency too. Now, as previously stated, world tendency has changed in Demon's Souls depending on a variety of factors, some rather arcane, including how often you die, where you die, what or who you've killed, and so forth. Moving forward and killing bosses in the game will generally move you more towards white tendency, but dying a bunch in human form will move you fairly quickly towards the dark side. 
Now, all this wouldn't necessarily be obvious to new players, and as you can probably tell by now, some factors might mean that the harder a time you're having in a world, the more difficult it can become. It's brutal, in other words. Character tendency is basically your character's alignment, like good, evil, neutral, and it's mostly affected by which NPCs you do or don't attack, and whether you invade other players' worlds. Just like world tendency, it affects the difficulty of the game, and at pure white or pure black, adds some extra content as well. To get the most out of the game and discover all the areas and secrets it has to offer, you kind of want to be trying out the more extreme ends of the sliding scale. What all this means really is that Demon Souls systems were a lot harder to navigate, especially these tendency systems and its upgrade systems. There was also a limit to how much you can carry, which is separate and stricter than how much you can equip, bear in mind. And on top of all of that, your health is halved upon death. Dying in human form in an area makes that area harder too, owing to that sliding you into a blacker world tendency. In short, players who are used to Dark Souls' comparatively forgiving mechanics might be in for a rude awakening. So how will all of this transfer over into the remake, if it does at all? How faithful is the Demon Souls remake to the original game? Well, if the most recent trailer is anything to go by, it's aiming to stay incredibly close to the first game, in terms of visuals and layout at least. The latest trailer appears to show off the tutorial level with an identical layout and the exact same enemy placement as in the original game. Of course, the visuals have been upgraded to a stunningly high standard, but it's also worth pointing out that the audio has also undergone an incredibly detailed transformation too. From the squeaks when the character steps onto some wooden scaffolding, to the sound of absorbing souls being reminiscent of a thundering whisper, It's an amazingly rich audio landscape. Even the player character and the enemies are more vocal. Aside from them sounding different, there are also more animation flourishes that give everything a bit more character, particularly the slightly odd body slam that happens when you repost an enemy. So we haven't seen any major changes outside of obvious visual and audio upgrades yet. In fact, pretty much everything we've seen of the remake so far matches up to the original almost exactly. Vaulting has returned, which was a mechanic in Demon Souls but not in any Soulsborne game following it, and even the general flow and pacing seems to be like for like. There is one thing that Bluepoint is still keeping close to its chest, and that's the HUD, which has most likely been removed from the trailers thus far to let fans see as much of the world as possible without any kind of a distraction. Or is it possible that they're making some changes to it? From the addition of new sound effects and new animations, it's clear the blue point doesn't mind making minor tweaks to the original here and there to improve the overall experience. But where exactly does the studio draw the line? because there are definitely areas that Demon Souls could use a modern overhaul. The original's world and character tendencies may feel a little overly complex and archaic to some players now, but with a bit of refining, it needn't be. I mean, the idea behind it is that it's a morality system that tells you that your deeds have a positive or negative impact on Boletaria. It just isn't that great at explaining it. So maybe having more visual cues in the game to actually show players how the worlds are changing would not only enrich the experience, but also add more contextual storytelling to the environment. So, for example, if you're veering close to pure black tendency, the skies are darker, more enemies could be lurking in the shadows, everything just has a more ominous and eerie look to it. Meanwhile, pure white tendency could make your character appear more hopeful, the world a little brighter. There are some tiny touches in the trailers already that kind of hint Bluepoint is making those small stylistic changes that actually enrich the world. For example, fog doors or fog gates have become a staple in Souls games, but in Demon's Souls, they actually have a purpose and a role to play within the lore of the game. Because the bosses usually found behind these gates are the ones spreading the deep fog throughout the world. 
In the newest trailer for the remake, not only is the fog gate far more detailed, but at times it almost looks like the Vanguard is emitting a kind of hazy fog of its own as it moves and attacks the player. And this kind of makes the idea of other environmental touches that add to the lore while also being tied to the gameplay in a meaningful way not that far-fetched an idea. There is one thing the fans have been hoping for in the Demon Souls remake that might be a little bit far-fetched though, and that's to do with a broken archstone. As with many games in development, there was content for Demon's Souls that, for one reason or another, unfortunate timing, scripting, deadlines, whatever, ended up being cut from the final product. Demon's Souls references this directly. As mentioned before, the game is more level-based than other Soulsborne games, and you access these levels by approaching points in the world called Archstones and warping between their locations throughout the land. There are five Archstones within the Nexus, Small King, Burrow King, Tower Queen, Shadow Men, Chieftain, all of which lead to the five different playable worlds. But then there's also a sixth broken archstone, which is described as being given to the great giants of the Northern Lands. Over the years, players have data mined the game and meticulously pieced together what that land of the giants might have looked and played like. And with the remake, some were hoping that this lost land might be restored and finally playable. That was always kind of a long shot, given the blue point is, with this remake, simply restoring and enhancing what From Software already created, not making up brand new areas and enemies by itself. But any hope that there may have been new content is perhaps dashed in the latest trailer where eagle-eyed fans can spot around the 16 second mark that the sixth archstone is still broken and therefore unlikely to transport players anywhere new anytime soon. Eh, we can but dream. And those are, essentially, the main spoiler-free things any Demon Souls newbie might be interested to know before going into the remake. We still have some general questions, of course. Will the game still be limited to four directional rolling, for example, or will it roll with the time, see what I did there, and allow for omnidirectional dodging, finally? Does this ultra-fast loading, assuming it isn't edited, of course, mean the end for loading screen tips? And is this scene, the only visual we have so far that doesn't tie into anything in the original game, a hint at some new gameplay. Odds are it is just a fancy new cinematic and that's okay too because holy Estus flasks, the dragon god has never looked scarier. Oh, and on that note, will we still get an early glimpse at the dragon god if we defeat Vanguard in the tutorial? Well, we'll be attempting to find the answers to these questions and more besides as we get closer to the launch of the PlayStation 5 and the Demon's Souls remake. So make sure you're subscribed to Eurogamer for a new video every single day. Until then, stay safe, Slayer of Demons. Thanks for watching. Bye.